everyone, and welcome to In the Workshed. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how to paint your own Nerf Blaster. A lot of LARPs have been using Nerf Blasters recently as stand-ins for firearms or stand-ins for crossbows for a variety of reasons, the least of which is they're pretty expensive, they're pretty easy to use, and they're pretty safe. We'll be discussing this model in particular. This is the Nerf Hammer Shot from the Zombie Strike line. But a lot of the tips and tricks we're going to talk about today, they can be used on any foam flinging weapon out there. You don't have to have a Nerf brand, you can have any of the other variety of brands. We're going to start off with the Hammer Shot for a very selfish reason. It's the blaster that I know the most about and it's one of my favorite blasters out there. Uh, I probably disassembled and reassembled more than 10 of these. Uh, my own primary blaster is a modified Hammer Shot and I've taken that thing apart and reassembled it so many countless times um, that I just know my way around this, this blaster really well. If you're a novice, if you've never painted a Nerf gun before, start off with this guy. As we said before, they're pretty inexpensive, but beyond that, when we crack this guy open, you're going to see it's very simple and easy to assemble, disassemble, and put back together. So let's not waste any more time, let's cut right into it. I really enjoy using this guy, it's really fun to use. Um, let's try to keep this as simple as possible, just because I, I want this to be as accessible as possible to people. So I have a supply list here, and let's go through this stuff that is a required, things you're definitely going to need to use, versus things that if you have laying around, go ahead and use them. And the first thing you're probably going to need is sandpaper. Uh, I would prefer to use a heavier grit because you're going to have to sand off logos, sand off uh, some of the raised bits. Uh, you want to make your gun as rough as possible for the first layer of paint that we're gonna put down. If you have something, like a rotary Dremel, absolutely use it for those hard to reach places. Now you need to pick a color scheme for your Nerf Blaster. And it, it's up to you entirely. If you are going to a fantasy game, go ahead and make your blaster red, make your blaster blue. If you have like a cyberpunk game, neon greens and baby blues, please go ahead, do that. Those are really fun and I've seen some beautiful looking Nerf blasters out there. But for the game that we're going to be using, it's going to be for a cowboy LARP set in the 1880s. So yeah, we're going to go with some muted colors here. I'm first going to cover everything in a black primer first. So this is Rust-Oleum. As you can see, most of these always say Bonds Plastic, and these are relatively inexpensive. So I'm going to go with a black first as an entire base. Then you need to pick some accent colors to go along with it, because you just can't have a, a, a straight black gun. So I'm going to go with this brown here as the wood handle for the gun. And then I'm going to use a couple accents of this silver uh, to kind of highlight other aspects of the blaster that I don't want to be either of those two colors. To get your spray paint into those precision areas, you're probably going to also need some painter's tape. This is just blue painter's tape, but I think it comes in green now. Found at any hardware store, this is relatively inexpensive, and you'll probably also need a pair of scissors because we're gonna be putting some of this tape into some hard to reach places. Last thing you're going to need is some screwdrivers. Now, this big one here might be a little bit too big, so I also have two smaller ones with us here to help us get to those hard to reach screws. Since this is going to be a multiple day long uh, time intensive project, I kind of want to go through all the steps first before we actually do them. Our first step is going to be disassembling the gun. If you don't do this and you try to paint it all together, you may get some of these movable parts stuck and painted to the rest of the non-movable plastic and then you're going to have to try to rip that off after you do your nice beautiful paint job. It's going to be a pain. So our first step is going to be to, to disassemble the gun removing these movable parts here and painting and sanding those separately. Then we'll be sanding the entirety of the gun, trying to rough up all this nice clean plastic and removing all of the logos and warnings and safety stuff, etc. Then we'll be painting the gun in pieces as best as we can, giving it first a coat of black primer. Then we will tape off certain parts of the gun to do our highlights. Then we will reassemble the gun back together again and you'll be good to go. On most of these Nerf blasters they have one side that has no screws on it so flip it over and you'll find the other side that has all the screws on it. So this is now your time to sit here with your screwdriver and take out all the screws around the entirety of the Nerf blaster. I'm going to put all my screws into this spare tin cup here so I don't lose them. So 
So once you have your screws out, you can very, oh, <laughs> I forgot there is a sticker here. Cut that sticker. And now we should be able to pull out our Nerf Blaster. Now make sure you try to save all of your screws. Do not lose them. So there we go. So we took off all of our screws, pulled off our back, and now here's what we have next for our Nerf Blaster. These are the internals of this. And this is the reason why I said this is a pretty easy Nerf Blaster to start with, because it's all self-contained in this piece here. Now be careful, because you have this, which is part of the end strike uh, tactical rail. So you could put like a, a scope or something up there and this piece here sits there to hold your attachment in place. So make sure you don't lose that. Put that off to the side. So what we want to do is pull the entire assembly out. And the easiest way to start with that is just to pull out your cylinder. So that's just one giant chunk of plastic there. You can't really harm that. So put that off to the side there. Pull out this piece here. Now let me show you that again. It sits directly into that slot. So I'm just going to pull that straight out. This does not want to be painted either. So put that off to the side for protection. Now we can lift up and straight whoop, the entirety of the blaster assembly. And that's actually everything that's going on in your blaster. You can actually see how that works. It's actually really cool. But we're going to also put this off to the side because we don't want parts of this getting painted either. So now we're left with our blasters, our two blasters, our two blaster pieces, and now they're together. If you want to, because I've seen this happening as well, I know that this piece can come out. Yeah, there we go. That piece can come out there. Uh, sometimes I like to sand this individually as well, just because it's a, a really uh, hard to reach place. So I'll pull that out as well. And sometimes this guy can come out, but that's not super necessary. So we can just leave that guy in there for now. All right, now that we pulled out all the important parts that we don't want painted, now we can begin sanding this guy. So when I sand, I like to only use like a portion of a time. So I'm gonna fold this back here and rip that all off. And then I'm actually gonna rip that in half and use about that much to start with. So I'm not sure how well you could see that on here, but there's a few things that we are definitely aiming for. We're gonna aim for this warning label here. You can actually kind of hear that. There's a warning label there. There is a logo here that says Hammer Shot. There is a logo here that says Zombie Strike. There is, of course, the giant Nerf logo. And then there's this little guy down here as well. And it's almost mirrored entirely on the other side. Uh, Hammer Shot, Nerf logo, and Zombie Strike. So those are the ones we're going to aim for first. We want to get that down entirely flat. Uh, last thing you want is your super realistic looking Nerf gun running around the woods with a giant Nerf on the back of it. So, nothing else to do. Let's just start working on it. So already, that's like a minute of sanding, and we already have both of our logos gone there and there. So th the tip of this and the trick to this is just put on music, put on something, put on a TV show, put something on your phone, sit there and just go to work. Just sit there and just start sanding away. Now, this one's going to be a pain in the No! I just hit the camera. Oh, Lord, whatever. New position. This one's going to be a pain in the half. Uh, this guy's going to be a complete jerk to get off for a variety of reasons. And I keep saying that, a variety of reasons. Uh, it's going to be a pain to get off because with these ones, you get this nice, beautiful, long... <laughs> this is a mess! Oh my gosh, it's already a mess! With this one, you can have all this room to run the sandpaper up and down on. With this one, you kind of are limited to that little, that little motion there. So just take your time, sit here. Hold it in a nice, comfortable position and just go to town. Whew. All right. What a mess. What a mess. Now, we didn't talk about getting these stickers off because, quite frankly, I am terrible at taking off stickers, uh, be it ugh, any kind of sticker. Oh, my. You know what? Okay, there we go. There we go. I did that once. Ready? Ready? I'm going to mess it up. Ready? Damn it, I moved it again. Okay, I, I'm dropping all pretense. I hit the camera like twice already, so if you're like, hey, it's jumping around, I'm hitting the camera. I'm trying my best. 
You might think to yourself, oh great, look, we're done. We got all the logos off, we're nice and clean. Let's get some paint on it. Paint, 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 paint. No, look at that. You can see that really nice and clearly on the video. All that shiny plastic on a toy is beautiful and great. But for painting, we need a rough, abrasive surface for the paint to stick to. This is just like painting anything else. You need to sand an area down before you paint it to make sure the paint will stick very well. So what I would do if I were you would be, I would look at areas where your hands are going to handle this the most. So places your hands going to handle this the most, the handle. So definitely sand this area up. Sand this area here in the trigger because that's where your finger is gonna be. That's where your boom button is gonna go. This place right back here, the hammer, that's gonna be a place that most likely is going to rub. You're probably gonna put this in a holster. So you wanna be careful on these corner pieces here, this flat big area here, these corner ridges here. Those are all places that's gonna rub inside your, uh, your holster every time you holster this thing. So. Areas like this eh, probably isn't going to get you know a lot of wear and tear, but this corner here, these corners up here, you definitely probably want to hit those with a sand, hit those and sand those as best as you can. And then while you're at it, don't forget these little guys too. Well, you don't need to, to, to get it down to the bare plastic. You don't need to remove all this, but you just want to rough it up enough that when you put the paint over top, it will stick pretty good. So we're left with our last two pieces here, and this is really entirely up to you. The, with my guns, with my uh, blasters, I like to sand off the hammers and the triggers as well, because I like to paint those guys uh, separately. Um, and I sometimes even like to paint this guy in sand right here. But for safety sakes with our game, since safety is a key, uh, there's really no like barrel for us to leave orange. So what I'm going to do for this gun is I'm going to leave the entire cylinder orange. So I'm not even going to bother painting or sanding that. But I'm going to sand our trigger and our hammer just because I want to keep those guys uh, in genre. Now that we have all of our parts sanded, it's now time to move on to the painting part. What we're going to do is paint the entire shell of this black, we'll paint all of these pieces black, and then we'll tape off the trigger and the hammer, and that way we can spray paint those black as well. Now to tape over, let's get you guys out of here. To tape over it, just simply, I just really wanna make sure that I don't get any kind of paint anywhere on any of these parts, especially this. That is the, uh, oh my gosh, what the heck is that called again? Now that we're ready, we're gonna take this outside and spray paint our hammer and our trigger black. Now obviously I'm not gonna spray paint them right here because that's not kind of safe, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Rust-Oleum flat black primer, take this outside to a cardboard box I have set up, and I'm gonna spray paint them all. Now these ones aren't gonna really move around too much, but what I'm gonna do is, a little tip of the trade, is I'm gonna take a piece of painter's tape, loop it, like so, whoop, 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 whoop. loop it like so, and then I'm gonna just put this little piece right there on it and then connect that to my cardboard that I'm gonna spray onto. So what I like to do is I like to have a little cardboard box set up, put all these pieces in there and then spray them down, and this little tip here won't go flying around, so we won't lose that. So here's our first piece, which was the hammer and the trigger. They are fully primed in black. So we can actually move on to the next step with this. Uh, I don't want to keep these black. I'd like to make these entirely silver. So I'm going to go through and spray paint these silver. The same with this little piece here, the little lanyard piece at the bottom. I'm going to also make that silver. And I'm also going to make this little piece silver. This was the end strike attachment rail piece. I'm going to also do that silver. So now we're left with our shell and we're left with this little piece here. And you know what, I think I'm actually gonna make this silver as well. So we're left with what's gonna be silver on our gun here. So I think I'm gonna make this part here all entirely silver. And I think I'm gonna make the end strike uh, tack rail, I think I'm gonna make that all silver as well, leaving the entirety of our handle to be brown. So let's go ahead and tape that up. So 
So that should be pretty good to get our tack rail up here. Uh, now that the time to get this part. I like how earlier I said, use a pair of scissors. And here I am clearly not using a pair of scissors on these uh, fine details. But you know what? To each their own. Here we are with our blaster ready to be painted. We are going to paint this all silver here, this accent part all silver as well, and then we'll be doing the handle here entirely in brown. Now, you might feel like you could jump ahead and start painting both of these at once. What I would do is I would probably just start with the accent, one accent color first. So I'll do this silver and this silver, let it dry overnight, and then hit the handle with some brown. So let's first start off with that silver. Here is our gun after our first layer of silver, and uh, I'm getting excited already. I think that looks absolutely beautiful. But as you can probably tell, I made a mistake. Uh, I thought I can get away with leaving this part untaped. Obviously, uh, I, made a, I made a mistake. I made an error. So, how do you fix that if that happens to you? Well, it's pretty simple. Just go back through with your base layer color and just try to spot clean that up there, which is what I'm going to do right now. After covering over our mistakes with our uh, black primer, it looks pretty good. Solved actually a lot of our problems there. So now let's go ahead and finish up with our handle here. And in fact, before I do that, I'm probably going to add just a little bit more tape just to make sure I don't have any other errors. Here we are, a full day after letting all this dry. We have our shell. We have our hammer and trigger. And we have all the other little tiny accessories that we have. So let's take this apart and see what it looks like. So our trigger and hammer assembly, uh, they're looking pretty good. And obviously still functional. So that's great. We just got to take our little end strike attachment thing. Just put that right there. Let's move everything off to the side and let's take apart our shell. So here is our finished hammer shot, and this thing looks beautiful. I love this so far. There's only a few spots here and there where I could see that the paint came through, but that's hard to notice. Uh, on the whole, this actually came out really nice. The next step is entirely up to you. If you want to go through and then maybe paint some of these like fake screw holes around here, that's entirely yours. Or if you want to come and paint this like weird fake uh, Blade Runner, Piece. I think this gun's been, it's based off the Blade Runner gun. I don't think that's a, that's a secret or anything. But um, that's entirely up to you if you want to come through and fix that. The other complaint I have with this is this part right here, the handle. Uh, it's part of the Zombie Strike line, and if you've seen any of the other Nerf guns from the Zombie Strike line, a lot of them have this found uh, broken machinery uh, theory on it. You know, it, it's it's the aesthetic design they created. So you'll see some of them have like a lever action um, rifle, but the lever is a screwdriver, or they have you know pieces of hammers, or I think the one has a silencer that's like a tin can that you put on the top. So this one has the least amount of brokenness to it, but you can still see they have this like hand wrapping here to imply that it broke at one point and they taped it up. So you have like pretty much two options there. Just ignore it. Or, or, if you really want to, you can try to fix it. And you can dremel it down, try to sand it as much as you can, put in some um, either putty or we use something called green stuff, which is our uh, Warhammer, because we're big Warhammer nerds. Um, green stuff is a two-part epoxy that you mix and then you kind of build up over it. So you have a couple options there on how to fix this. Or you just put medical tape or grip tape or even skateboard tape. You know, you could put some sort of tape here, electrical tape, to cover that up. It's entirely up to you. But right now, I don't think most people are going to notice it. And in fact, you know, when it's covered in your hand, few people will. So for right now, I'm just going to let this go. So we're ready to do our next part, which is the assembly. So let's crack this thing open and put her back together. I hope... Whoop, here we go. I hope you didn't lose your can of screws. So let's go to work. The reassembly of this is going to be pretty simple. You just want to line up. You can see here you have all these like little guide holes in here. Just line those parts back up again as best as you can, and it'll just fall into place. Make sure that you still have this part here, because remember that goes that goes into the cylinder. And that drops in. Now this part always gets me. I forget if it's 
if it's down way, down ways or up ways, the, uh, the, the cylinder has this little bit here. So I believe it goes down ways, but if not, we'll fix it. And it's an easy fix, just putting it back together. We're gonna put our lanyard. There we go, just had to push it in just a little bit there. Um, I do kind of like the lanyard for the one game that we used a lot of these for. It was a World War One game, and that was apparently a thing. You would like put a lanyard to your gun and and have it like wrapped around your body, I guess, so the enemy couldn't find it. Don't forget the spring when you put this uh, end strike attachment piece back in, because that actually helps hold the end strike attachment in place. So we're putting that back up here at the tip. Don't forget our little uh, nose cone thing. I have no clue. And then. Lay it all back together, and there we go. Looks pretty darn good. So let's screw these back together, and we'll take a final look at the entire assembly. So here is our final assembled gun, and oh my gosh, uh, it came out looking really good. I'm really glad uh, the light kind of hits those silvery parts perfect. I, I've made entire guns, and I've actually done the reverse of this, where I've made these parts all black and made this all silver, and it just it looks a little goofy. Using these, these bright silvers to kind of hit that sunlight on there, oh, it's going to look so nice in the field. You might be wondering again, why did I leave the barrel entirely orange, and it's safety. Um, it's actually the law here in the United States. Oh, let me get this out of the way. It's actually the law here in the United States that you must have an orange safety tip on all of your fake firearms. That's the reason why Nerf guns are so so darn bright. Um, so when you paint them with a realistic style like this, it is just for safety. You want to make sure that no one can mistake this for an actual handgun, an actual uh, real gun. Uh, there is maybe some concerns about, you know, the paint rubbing up against other painted parts in there, but not really. It's it's pretty freestanding. And again, paint parts rubbing up, up against other paint parts isn't really going to be a big concern. So mainly I like leaving these guys entirely orange just for safety's sake. Here's our final product. It spins. It looks great. It still shoots. It's functional. It looks amazingly in genre. And it's LARP safe. So this will, this will serve you well in your holster, shooting zombies in the middle of the night, what have you. This uh, is beautiful. I love it. I've done probably almost a hundred different Nerf guns at this point, painting these guys up in various shapes and sizes, and I love it. It's really fun, but the biggest thing that I had to learn about this is patience. I'm not a patient guy. I want to get this thing done immediately and go out there and go play with it but you're going to run into issues. If you're not patient and you spray too much spray paint, you're going to get those drips. You're gonna get that like bleeding through. If you put your painter's tape on too soon before the first layer uh, cures, when you pull that painter's tape away, you might be ripping away parts of your paint. And that's not ideal. You don't want that, that's horrible. You put all this time and effort into your gun, sanding it and putting on all these layers of paint, the last thing you want is your impatience ruining it. So it took me a while. It took me a while to get to that point of, okay, you know what? I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of fixing my mistakes. Let's just take our time with this and you will have a blast. This is a really fun project. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, if you want me to do more Nerf guns like this, I'll be glad to do it. I love painting up Nerf guns. So we are in the work shed. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and I uh, appreciate your views. Thank you very much and have a good night.